Hello, Salesforce developers. My name is Danielle Aregi, and I'm a senior developer advocate here at Salesforce focusing on the Data Cloud platform. I'm really, really excited about the Summer 24 release and all of the new innovations that are coming out to Data Cloud. So speaking of those innovations, I'm going to give you my top five favorite things. As you know, our releases have a lot of innovation, so it was really, really hard to choose these five, but I'm really, really excited about each, each one of these. So the first one is the ability to connect Data Cloud to Heroku natively and get data from a Heroku PostgreSQL database. Um, as you know, Heroku is a platform to build apps, websites, and a lot of data is fed through Heroku, and that data will now be even more powerful with the Data Cloud Connector. We also have some new enrichment, some new enhancements coming out for CRM enrichments. Uh, the first one in the form of copy field enrichments. Previously, you could only use copy fields with the contact and lead objects, but now we have expanded support for multiple Salesforce standard objects, as well as a variety of Salesforce custom objects. And for CRM enrichment relate. CRM enrichment related lists. Uh, we previously only had support for the contact and lead object, but now we have more support uh, by expanding that functionality to the account standard object. Uh, for all my developers, uh, we know that you love working with APIs. We have a new API that is available with data graphs that I'm going to demo today that's going to be much faster and have a lot more performance in it than just using the Connect APIs and the Query APIs for pulling data out of Data Cloud. And then we have second generation packaging, which is now currently available for ISV partners, which is going to make packaging data kits and sharing uh, all of the cool things that you're building in Data Cloud or on top of the Data Cloud platform more shareable um, and more available to be able to publish to things like App Exchange as well as version control and source control. So a lot of amazing updates that our product managers have released. Uh, coming out with the Data Cloud updates. So let's first get started with Heroku. So as I previously mentioned, Heroku is, an is a platform for building your own applications, um, web apps, mobile apps, and a lot of data, as you can imagine, is being fed through all of these applications as users are using them. So there's a lot of behavior, analytics, views, and all of that data can be captured in Heroku's very own Postgres database. Well, with the new native connector to Data Cloud, all those interactions are now available to be ingested into Data Cloud's data lake so that you can start using Data Cloud's functionality like activations, reporting, um, and, and segmentation, and all of the functionality that can plug into Data Cloud. So I'm going to go ahead and demo that for you right now. So let's get into the demo. So here I am in Heroku, and I'm in my PostgreSQL database. You can see here to the right that I have a few tables already that are already collecting some information um, into my PostgreSQL database. So I have a table here for guests, a table here for metrics, as well as a table here for systems. And here I am in now data cloud setup. So I already have my connector configured so that I can get in data from Heroku into my Data Cloud org. I'm going to click into this Heroku connector, and you'll see that this is as easy as just doing a little bit of configuration. So all I need to do is put in the username and password for my Heroku user. I just need to put in my connection URL um, as well as my database name. And just as easy as that, it makes the connection between Data Cloud and Heroku so I can start ingesting data into my data lake from Heroku. Now, speaking of ingesting data into my data lake from Heroku, um, the way that we get in data from uh, our external systems into Data Cloud is via something called Data Streams. So here I am on my Data Streams tab, and what I'm going to go go and do is click this new button. And here you'll see that I have a new Heroku PostgreSQL tab right here. I'm going to select this tab. This means that this is now in available as a source system to ingest data from and I'm going to click Next. And then I'm going to choose my schema where I set up my tables. And right here, you see I have my guest table, my metrics table, and my systems table, which were in Heroku. I'm just going to select one of these tables and click Next. And from this screen, I can set my primary key, and I can set the fields that I want to ingest. So all this data can easily come in from Heroku into Data Cloud. And that is so powerful because all of that data that's stored in just with a little bit of configuration is now available for all of my activations in Data Cloud. All right, now let's look at our next innovation that also came out as of the Summer 24 release. 
So copy filled enrichments. Now I love copy filled enrichments because I used to get a lot of questions when I used to go to user groups and speak about how can I get my data to copy back into Salesforce CRM? Well, enrichments is a really, really easy way to copy data from Data Cloud's data lake over into your Salesforce CRM. It's all configurable and very, very easy to set up. You can copy over fields on data model objects, as well as calculate insights that you build in Data Cloud. And all of these can be displayed on a field on now uh, multiple Salesforce standard and multiple Salesforce custom objects. And it even keeps it synced for you um, throughout the day so that you don't have to worry about data being you know, not refreshed or out of date. Now let's go into the demo to see how this works. So here I am in my data cloud org. And previously, you might remember when you would access enrichments, you'd have to go to the contact or lead setup. Well, now this has all been moved over to a centralized area and setup. So I'm gonna go into my Salesforce setup, and then I'm going to type in enrichments here. And I'm gonna select copy field. And this is where I will configure all of my enrichments for data cloud to pull over the data from data cloud's data lake and data model objects over into a CRM object. So I already have a couple of uh, enrichments configured here for the account and contact objects. I'm gonna click at the top. And you can see here that I have the ability to copy over my open cases field on my data model object, as well as my last modified date and display those on the account. I can see some details about the data source object that's configured, and I can even see some details about the sync history so I know how recent the data is that's coming over into Salesforce from Data Cloud. Now, this is super powerful because, once again, it's just configuration. You can easily pull this over. Previously, you had to use the Connect API and some queries, and it just made it a little bit more difficult. But with enrichments, this makes it easy to do in as little as five minutes with configuration. All right. Now that you've seen that, let's look at our next innovation that's coming out for the summer 24 release. So continuing with enrichments, we now have related list enrichments, which were previously also only available on the contact and lead object. But we know that for Salesforce, one of the main objects that people are working in is usually accounts. And so we have now expanded this functionality to be available on the account object. So let's go into the demo and see how I can display these related lists on an account. So here I am in my data cloud setup, and you can see here that I'm on an account, or excuse me, I'm actually in Salesforce setup, and I'm on an account on the object, and I have a data cloud related list right here selected, and I was able to bring over cases from an external system and have those displayed on an account. Again, just all configuration. It's really, really powerful for either a developer or an admin. Um, and to, to copy this over, and it's, it's gonna enable you to display multiple related objects and multiple um, related data model objects on an account. It's gonna be very, very powerful, and I know developers will really, really enjoy working with this. All right, now that we've seen that, let's look at our next enhancement. So our next enhancement is with the data graphs and data graphs API. So um, with the new Data Graphs API, you now have the ability to create a data graph, which allows you to create relationships between multiple data model objects. And then you can use the API to query for a particular object, as well as its related objects and records from those related objects. Let's get into the demo to see how this works. All right. So here I am in my data graph, and you can see that I have my primary data model object, which is my individual object. And you can see that I have a couple of related data model objects, the contact point address, contact point email, and contact point phone. I'm gonna go ahead and just click preview so you can see the JSON structure of uh, the data and how it's structured on the back end. And so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to use this data graph that I built to query an individual and pull back its related contact point address, contact point email, and contact point phone records. Mm -hmm. So in order to do that, I'm going to use Postman. And the first thing that I need to do is do an authorization from Postman to the Salesforce hub that is hosting my data cloud org. So I'm gonna go up here and perform my first authorization request. I'm just gonna click send. And what this is going to do, it's gonna use OAuth to feed me back a token. And then I need to perform a second authorization to the tenant specific URL where my data cloud is hosted. So in order to do that, I'm going to do another post request to my endpoint. 
And what that's going to do is it's going to exchange my previous token for a new token. And after that, I am all authenticated so that then I can actually use that data graph that I just showed you to pull back a single record. So I'm gonna feed this a single record ID. And what it's going to do is it's going to query the individual and then it's gonna return me the associated contact point, email address and phone number for that individual. Let's go ahead and see this, how this works. All right, and just as quickly as that, I now have back my record as well as all of the related records using the data graph API. Really, really cool. This is gonna be way more powerful than using the Connect API to query records. It's gonna be a lot easier to be able to query a primary record as well as the associated records. So really, really excited about this data graph API that just came out as of the summer 24 release. Now let's look at the final thing that just came out. So we now, we previously had first generation packaging and some people might not have been aware that you could already package up data lake objects, data models and different metadata that you built inside of your uh, data cloud org. Um, we now have second generation packaging which is available currently only for ISVs but we will be expanding this uh, soon so that everyone can use second generation packaging. This is gonna be a lot faster and a lot easier to be able to package up all of the cool things that you're building in data cloud. You'll be able to share these packages easily and you'll even be able to use them uh, with source code control like Git as well as scratch orgs to further integrate with the DevOps process right now for developing. Now let's go ahead and take a look at, one of, at how one of these uh, packages look like and how they work. So here I am in my code editor, and what I already have done is created a data packaging kit. It already consists of multiple source objects. Um, I have some data model objects in here. I even have some calculated insights packaged up. And now what I can do with this is I can share this to multiple scratch orgs. I could share this to multiple Salesforce orgs. I could publish this on Git, and I could even publish this up on AppExchange if I wanted to. So. Really, really amazing things for developers to be able to share all the cool things that they're building. And I'm really, really excited about everything that came out in the Summer 24 release. I hope that you are too.